<laughs> okay. Well, we have lots to talk about, but one of the things I wanted to ask you was, <laughs> we will pass this back and forth. Um, I never was a jazz fan, and this movie changed that for me. So I wanted to do some truth telling. Were you guys? Are you guys? Were you guys jazz fans before this? No. <laughs> okay. There's a nice way to say that. <laughs> um, I, I, I really like jazz, but I feel like I am no expert in jazz. I love listening to jazz music, but I couldn't really discern what I'm listening to necessarily. Or what, which artists I'm listening to. I want to be a jazz fan because that sounds so cool. <laughs> exactly. Right? But yeah. And I like appreciate it, but I can't listen to it at length. But maybe now. <laughs> so, did this movie, movie change your perceptions at all, or or broaden your horizons? There's a great documentary called Jazz by Ken Burns that was mm -hmm. done for PBS, yeah. which is really pretty great, and uh, it really helped me. I watched that a lot while I was making the film because uh, it so beautifully uh, d details all the th the history and, and what there is uh, to love about jazz. So that was I found that really helpful. Well, speaking of truth-telling, too, I also heard that you did all your own piano playing in this. No CGI. <laughs> no hand doubles. <laughs> did you play the piano before? Did you learn during the making of this movie? I did. Well, we had about... Um, I didn't really play before, but I always wanted to. So uh, it was a great opportunity to spend three months practicing with a great tutor. Um, but uh, we had three months to to practice, uh, you know, everything. So you you know, it's not a lot, but it was enough. That sounds like not a lot, but that's it's really impressive. Um, and you you've been musical before. I mean, that's sort of a proclivity of yours, would you say? I did some <laughs> '90s hip hop when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and Emma, you have been. You've been in a musical recently. Yeah. yeah. So you have you always considered yourself a musical person? Oh, uh, I don't know that I've considered myself a musical person. I'm someone who, who likes musicals. Um, mm -hmm. And I had done, yeah, a musical when I, when I first met Damien. I was, I was doing a play. Um, I was doing cabaret. So that was my kind of first professional experience in the musical. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, yeah, that was my first time ever doing it kind of professionally. And Rosemary, I know that you weren't as involved in the music end of things, but what drew you to this particular project? You know, I met Damien before Whiplash came out, so that would have been the obvious thing, but it wasn't that. I just liked him, and then I think they were courting these guys or, you know, or whatnot. Um, and then once these guys were doing it, I mean, it's like I'm an experienced junkie. You know, I just want to work with these kind of great actors. And then, you know, who knew Damien was such a genius? Well, everybody after Whiplash, but yeah. <laughs> I signed on before then. You knew him from before Whiplash? Well, I met him, you know, and I was like, oh, yeah, I want to do this. So if it all comes together, yeah. So how did that go about? I mean, you guys are capable, obviously, of many great things, drama, comedy, um, but your names are not the first ones that come up when you think of singing and dancing. So how did it come up that both of you were involved? Were they conversations that came to, at the same time, or how were you approached by Damien? Either one. <laughs> well, you were first. What? <laughs> All right. All right. All right. <laughs> um, so I, I met Damien while I was doing Cabaret, and he came and saw the play, and we talked about this this film and then I read the script and asked him 64 million questions for like <laughs> uh, quite a while um, so we met up multiple times to talk about how exactly he wanted to execute things on the page that were you know a fight at a dinner table and then flying into space. I was kind of <laughs> trying to understand how it could all be cohesive what he was looking for what the music would be and um, so we just kind of talked for a long time, and then all of a sudden, I heard that he had talked to Ryan. <laughs> and that was that. Yeah. And you, this is your third collaboration. Yes. Um, does it, I mean, you guys have such great chemistry. Does it help to have already known each other and to have worked together before to, what was that? <laughs> 
to do the singing and dancing. Rosary. <laughs> <laughs> Um, does it help to have already known each other? Because sometimes you think that could help, and sometimes it could even not. Maybe, you know, it could impede. So, what do you think? I think it was, uh, it was so helpful that we worked together before because there was a lot to do uh, on this film, and we were able to just sort of hit the ground running. So to speak. Hit the ground dancing. Yeah, hit the ground dancing. Um, <laughs> so this that amazing dance scene with sort of at sunset up above overlooking the Hollywood Hills. I'd love to know more about how that happened. How many takes you had to do and all of that. We had. I mean, we had rehearsed that. The our rehearsal process was like summer camp because it was all summer. We started shooting in August and then we shot um, until October. And the, this scene in Griffith Park was like right near the end, I think two weeks before we were done. So um, we had rehearsed it for a very long time and then we had two days to shoot it, an hour each day at Magic Hour, which is that kind of time of day, um, which they kind of mathematically, <laughs> through a s many scientific experiments, <laughs> figured out that that would be about five per hour so we did five one day and five another day, like running back to the bottom of the hill and doing it again. Um, and it was pretty special, I think, just because we had worked on it for such a long time and our whole crew was so close at that point that um, it was, it's my favorite scene just because so much, um, there was so much rehearsal for it. And it was, yeah, one take and just fun to do. I love sort of the whole, it, it seems to encapsulize kind of what desire and flirtation is, you know, that sort of stepping forward and, and being tentative and then pulling back and, you know, in addition to being an amazing dance sequence, it also sort of captures the sense of when you first feel that thrill of attraction. And did you guys talk about sort of what it symbolized as well or did you just dance? I mean, how does it, because... <laughs> um, we used, there's a scene in, is it swing time? Uh, isn't it a lovely day to get caught in the rain? Top Hat. There was a scene in uh, Top Hat uh, with Gene, uh, with F Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers where they, I don't know if you're familiar with the scene, but they get caught in the rain and they start singing, you know, it's a love, they're trying to, they're basically looking on the bright side of that and trying to say, isn't it a lovely day to get caught right. in the rain and they start right. singing and dancing. And we thought it would be a nice way to make it pay homage to that time and that sensibility but to do a more contemporary version of that which would be even though that it's such a beautiful situation but they only see the negative of it right that they're just unimpressed and uh and uh in a competition to see who could be more bored <laughs> so uh that's sort of what we talked about just trying to get it to that place lyrically because the music was always uh there but there was a lot of rewrites as we were um, preparing and so uh, some of the songs had to change as well. Were you two fans of musicals before? Um, yeah. Yeah, very much. I I grew up really loving like stage musicals, so I loved Les Mis and Rent. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Rent, but I was really into it. <laughs> it's an audience of yeah. actors. So I <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I loved all of that, and I actually didn't really see this kind of movie musicals until I was a little bit older and even for this I saw Umbrellas of Cherbourg for the first time which Jack to me was a huge inspiration to Damien and so that was really um, cool to see that and I'd never seen Top Hat and so I yeah I learned a lot through doing this also. Umbrellas of Cherbourg is exactly what I thought of when I especially the ending yeah. that bittersweet yeah. ending. Mm -hmm. um, so were there moments that were, there was a great chemistry between brother and sister, by the way, too, between Laura and Seb's character, in addition to the romantic chemistry. Um, so were there moments that you guys ad-libbed? Was there you know, a lot of improvisation encouraged, or was it pretty much you stuck to the script? Ryan is an ad-libbing fiend, wouldn't you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, we did ad-lib a little bit. Um, we... 
this was one of those ones that I, when I met Damien, there were some scenes, and I was like, those scenes aren't going to even end up in the movie, because we don't need them, <laughs> you know, and they're not in the movie, but Ryan and I shot <laughs> another scene, and Emma and I had a scene, which actually helps, because I think I maybe really have one scene in the movie, which the way Damien shoots is one take in the movie, because he's such a badass, he doesn't cut into it, it's, I mean, we had a, I don't know if it was like a three or four page scene and the camera goes through a wall and comes out the other side. So it is like choreography, even when you're not dancing. So we were lucky to have had another scene and we had a scene. So you all feel kind of connected and you don't care if it ends up on the cutting room floor because you want the audience to care about the movie every minute. So you don't want anything, any fat on there. But um, I think that helps the chemistry and just these guys, you know, while you were talking about chemistry, it makes me think so much that so much of chemistry is just like willingness and openness and just that wanting to connect and these guys have that in spades so it, they have chemistry with everybody in the film, even your boss who you hate, you know what I mean? And there's like a spark there, so. Or when she's doing the auditions and yeah. that isn't going well, there's still that. One of my favorite, um, one of Rosemary's improvisations was in one of our first scenes we were shooting in the outside and there was a lot of uh, like, I don't know, like some kind of nut from a tree that kept falling. They're called acorns. Acorns. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Canada. They don't have them there. Okay, so you see them too, right? <laughs> They've been haunting me for years. But uh, she took one of these uh, acorns, acorns. <laughs> and she walked right up to me and she put uh, one, one in each nostril, one of, e one, e one of each of my nostrils. Oh, really? <laughs> Remember that? I did not. <laughs> You're a liar. No, I said You're in the scene, the camera was rolling, and I said, here, put these up your nose, and you did it. And then I was like, game on. I'm going to like acting with this I guy. Would, I totally thought you put them in my nose. <laughs> like, that and would just be so me. wrong on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, man, Rosemary's so badass. She just put two acorns in my nose. <laughs> and I did it. You're the badass, Ryan. <laughs> With yourself. You were the own, your own badass. So basically, he just gave like a lovely review of his own performance oh. and talent. You got in my head. Come on. You played mind games. So I mean. It does sound like something a sister would do to a brother, though. We can stick some acorns up their nose. <laughs> All right, so that leads me to the next question of, like, other hijinks that you guys uh, got up to on set. There must have been some other fun well, things. Well, I'm sticking out of this. You guys have to take it from here. <laughs> we did take the hijinks moments. question? You're not going to do any hijink stories? <laughs> I can't be trusted. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. It's true. Um... I am trying to think of actual hijinks. I think it was so kind of this much rehearsal and how, you know, we had two, we had eight weeks to shoot. So it kind of, we kind of had to just like go for it. There wasn't really too much um, time for extensive hijinks. <laughs> there were no pranks. Except for Rosemary trying to stick acorns <laughs> Except for up crazy. everybody's nose. <laughs> Except for that acorn trick. That's going to show up in Hollywood Reporter tomorrow. <laughs> there was a, in your singing of um, City of Stars, um, you laughed a couple times. I, I think I've, I've heard it on the soundtrack. And I wondered if there was, maybe when you guys were recording it, there was something funny happening there. Because um, oh. I just, it was a really endearing, sweet laugh, but I, it seemed like there might have been something, like a little private joke between you or something. Or was that just... <laughs> um, I think do you want to take it? <laughs> it was the acorns <laughs> um, I they think I was laughing at one point because I was off key and then I laughed again because I don't know something was maybe funny to me I'm not sure <laughs> we, we did it live so um, I don't know exactly I'd have to see it again to know what didn't we have was. a squeaky dolly was there a squeaky dolly? And we were laughing because that. Remember they brought in a dolly and we were like, just bring in the, the, the steady oh, yeah. can. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then they had this big dolly set up and it was squeaking and we were trying to sing. No? Or am I making that up too? <laughs> well, I feel like I, in that scene, every time I would um, start, it, you know what? It's a personal story. It's going to be gross again. I oh. talked about my sweating earlier and he didn't want to hear about it. We all want to hear that story. Well, it was, <laughs> it was a saliva problem. <laughs> 
Here and I think go. it was making. <laughs> I think it was making me laugh. I think I had a. Um, I was uh, a salivating a little bit. <laughs> you guys didn't pay for this, did you? <laughs> this is free of charge. <laughs> Free associating. <laughs> well, so singing live like that on set is that's got to be a whole different thing from anything you guys have done. Yeah. How did how do you prepare for that? Did you work with was it Justin Hurwitz, the composer, mm -hmm. um, as well as Damien? How does that how kind of walk us through that a little bit? It's pretty great because it was essentially an earwig and then Justin playing a keyboard. Um, just off camera, so he's sort of accompanying you just in your ear, which is also awful because you're acapella to everybody else <laughs> in the room, which I realized during the audition song, um, where I'm belting in silence to everybody else, <laughs> except for myself. Um, but it was it was wonderful because it just I think it was so necessary that you know that those things were live, just because um, they're very emotional and. It just helps so much rather than kind of lip syncing something. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in, I wanted to ask you also if you, I've heard people say this is kind of a musical for people who don't like musicals. I've heard people say, oh, I don't like musicals, but I love this movie. What do you think is, how is this happening? Is it because it's grounded in reality and to some extent that people, uh, do you have any thoughts? Let's ask Mar Rosemary over there. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think um, it to me it does feel like really organic. I mean, my husband's one of those people that doesn't like musicals, and I'll say, "Let's go see such and such." And he's like, "No." And I think it's because of the artifice, you know. And this, there isn't any, and if anything, like that audition scene in particular, it feels like there's nothing between the actress and the camera, which, I mean, is why I go to the movies. And I think if you can do that, and then there's something somebody was saying the other day something that like one of the purest art forms is music because it's like this felt thing. So maybe the combo platter, <laughs> you know what I mean, of this really truthful acting experience with the music kind of ties it all together. Mm -hmm. That's my theory and I'm sticking with it. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I think too, I and mean, we're living in somewhat difficult times um, and I, I know this is a film that I was really drawn to. It just lifted in my spirit so much and it feels like it's, maybe all the more timely because of post-election or anything. Um, it just feels like it's speaking to us. Like we need to have our spirits lifted, even though there is this reality aspect to it as well. But I wonder how you blend it. So how, did Damien have conversations with you guys about how to blend that as well as was blended? I mean, you have the moment with like the Priuses and you know, that kind of thing. And then you have the next moment where you're dancing at Magic Hour. How, yeah, it's, it's time for Ryan to talk. <laughs> so I'm just going to lie to you, but all right. <laughs> it's okay. We'll take it. Um, the question is, how did Damien balance the, the reality and fantasy aspects? I think it was always a big, uh, an ongoing, um, not an issue, but a, it was an ongoing thing for us to try and uh, stay on top of, which is to... to to try and make it uh, seem like the people that were singing and dancing were still the same people that were in the scene just before, that they didn't suddenly turn into different people altogether because they were singing. And that they were singing and dancing because they, uh, that's how they expressed themselves, not uh, because it was time for a, for a big number. Right. Um, so I think doing things like you know, uh, recording things for, uh, uh, like doing some things live, for instance, help that because you feel, uh, you know, the consistency of character from, from the scene into the song. They didn't suddenly come out with canes and hats and things like that. Where we yeah, and older. also trying to keep it um, evolving so that it wasn't uh, the same kind of number every time. Mm -hmm. Like there's the opening traffic number which really sets the tone that you're, for what you're about to see and you have to kind of check your ideas about reality at the door. <laughs> and then there's never really a number like that again. And then there's sort of the more uh, live and organic one which is us on the hilltop and then it kind of, you get to something like City of Stars where we're just at a piano singing. So just trying to keep it, um, um, I evolving so you weren't sure what was coming, but also to keep it um, so that those they were the same people uh, throughout. 
I'd heard um, Damien say that he really wanted it to be um, a story in which two people meet and fall in love and then don't end up together. Um, and that ending is so beautiful. Was that, did you have discussions about different ways it could go or was that all pretty cast in stone? Well, I think that that was the first thing that Damien even came up with. I think the ending was the beginning for him. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, I don't think we ever questioned that ending. Okay. Yeah. We have some, uh, I think, two questions from the audience, so I'm make sure I want to get to those. Um, Alicia Arden wants to know, how long did rehearsal take for the dancing? This is for you, it says. Where's Alicia? Yeah. Oh, there Hi. she is. <laughs> uh, three months. It was three months. We rehearsed for two months separately. <laughs> <laughs> and then they threw us together. And then, uh, the, yes. <laughs> so you rehearsed with like someone else instead of Emma? Well, just by myself, and, and I think I don't know if you had a, but for the most part, it was like just us, uh, it was me anyway, and uh, and the two choreographers for. Oh, that's what you mean. And there were actually some people from Dancing with the Stars really? that came in and <laughs> and helped. Did you do that show? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See how your career goes out of it. <laughs> Let's but, hope not. No, but uh, they were very uh, sweet to us, those people. And uh, they had a lot of patience. And uh, they a helped us a great patience. deal. So it was really great. Uh, and, and then the last month, they, uh, they put us together. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, when they were, felt like we were both uh, at the same level. Yes. <laughs> so Emma, what about your dance? Who you were dancing with and how that went? Yeah, it was pretty much the same for me. We were doing kind of exercises that, you know, the the craziest thing was that w because we weren't together and I knew that we were gonna dance together in the end, it was like every day this super competitive side in me came out and I was like, so like you guys <laughs> see Ryan today? And they'd be like, <laughs> yeah. And they'd be like. How's he doing? How far along is he? Like, what kind of <laughs> exercises is he working on? That's, oh, really? Oh, he's that good? Oh, that's great. They would always tell me how amazing Ryan was, and I was like, thanks a lot. That's, that's awesome. Um, they were doing the same to me. So See? Were they were trying to inspire us to keep going. Um, so I was doing uh, tap exercises that I think think eight-year-olds do for tap class, <laughs> which is just like a lot of, you know, foot moving warm-ups and then um, kind of moving into learning the, the basics of tap. And that is now like my favorite kind of dance to try to do. It's so much fun and so rhythmic and just, it's like you're playing an instrument and dancing at the same time. Wow. Um, so that was really, really fun to learn. And then ballroom dancing kind of came later when they, when they put us together with the people from Dancing with the Stars <laughs> to teach us how to ballroom dance. So it was pretty amazing. That scene with the twirling camera where you're doing the audition song, yeah. it's just so beautiful. I mean, you just, you're feeling the, the dance that would be inspired by your song there or just the, the musicality of it. Well, that, I mean, Damien had, had a very clear vision for the camera work in the movie. He could describe so much of the movie before we even shot it. And then I think Lena Sangren, who is, was our cinematographer, um, is just phenomenal and such a genius. And Ari Robbins is the unsung hero of this movie. He's a steady cam operator and he held that thing on his body for like 80% of the movie and he wow. danced with us through everything. So like in a song like Audition. And he did it all on peanut butter sandwiches. Sorry. <laughs> he eats a lot of peanut butter sandwiches. It's all he ate, just peanut butter sandwiches. It was, it's true. It was he amazing. Has, he has steady cams tattooed on his arms. Like wow. pictures of steady, yeah, That's serious. little drawings of steady cams. <laughs> He's a very committed uh, operator, but he he was phenomenal. And I remember in the audition scene, like standing in that room singing essentially a cappella to everybody else. Uh, him coming toward me and then spinning around, I was like, Ari. <laughs> oh, he was like my my buddy in that. It was yeah, he's amazing. Oh, well, the scene was so gorgeous. So, okay, I'm gonna ask one more question from the audience, and this is from Robert Trapp. Um, yes, there he is. Um, he says, what were you, Ryan, what were you most intimidated about before filming this movie? What did you think would be the most difficult? The singing and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Not the acting part? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, singing, acting like I could sing and dance. <laughs> uh, it was all pretty challenging, but that was also, uh, it was a great, 
challenge, and everybody was challenging themselves. It wasn't everyone was kind of out of their wheelhouse. Damien was reaching for something that was um, seemed almost in, in, inaccessible, and uh, everybody from the costume department to Ari to you know everybody was really pushing themselves. So, um, you know, I didn't, you know, it was it was um, encouraging because you saw everyone sort of. Uh, doing their best to not be the one to, you know, because Damien wanted to shoot all this stuff in one shot. So the idea was not just, you know, to, everybody had to know their part and uh, in order for this to work. So you didn't want to be the one to drop the ball. Nor were you. <laughs> um, we cut those parts. <laughs> <laughs> those acorn moments. Uh, <laughs> so this has been called a The acorn thing, thing was your idea though, right, Rosemary? <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Your question. I did not physically there. insert them in your. No, head. but you 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 planted that seed in my mind. Okay. No pun intended there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so our people have called this a love letter to L.A. and L.A. doesn't get a whole lot of love. Um, so, was that? Uh, how did you feel about that whole notion of it? I, mean, I know people watch it, kind of go, "Oh, look, there's you know." Uh, Huntington Library, or there's Griffith Park, or there's the Rialto, obviously. Um, are you guys, you're not from LA, but you, do you live here at all? No? Uh, I, I have lived here, yeah, quite a bit. Um, I think that it was something we were actually talking about earlier today that I didn't completely put together. It's a movie about LA by a bunch of people who are not from LA. <laughs> so Damien is from New Jersey and ha always had this kind of romantic idea of L.A. and I think kind of painted a picture as an outsider and we aren't from L.A. and um, are you from Rosemary, LA? where are you from? Oh, Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. That should be like the log line, like a, a, a <laughs> movie about L.A. written by people from New, New Jersey. Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it looks so good. <laughs> So I think there is that kind of outsider's perspective that maybe isn't necessarily super achievable if you grew up within the kind of, you know, w within this atmosphere. Um, there's something very nostalgic and aspirational and kind of heartbreaking from a distance about about this city. And then once you're in it, it's even more so. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it sort of it sort of recognizes both of those aspects. I think within it and. Um, yeah, I, I liked that that element of it very much. Absolutely. I guess it was a very necessary element. It's called La La Land, so <laughs> I guess it's good I liked that. You didn't like the traffic, though. I remember your character did not enjoy that, did no. not miss that. Yeah, no. Well, thank you all so much. I know you have another event to go to, and you are very much in demand, so really appreciate. Thank you, thank you Ryan. Thank, thank you, you Emma. Thank, thank you, Rosemary. Thank you. Thank you.